All right, George, you say it. You've got to say, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Hi, guys, and welcome back to my channel is George. Remember George, the one-eyed pirate Shih Tzu? He got groomed the other day, and uh, while he was at the groomers, I went out to take photographs. But before all that, I'll put you down, mate. Just say hello. Wave to the people. <laughs> go on. But before I did all that, it was my wife's birthday, and she wanted to go across to the mainland to Portsmouth from the island on the boat to go shopping. And I thought to myself, I don't really want to go shopping and stuff. I'll take a camera and go around the back streets and take some photographs. And that's what I did. A few days afterwards, I ended up down the beach with an RZ67 and a roll of Delta, uh, Ilford Delta 100 film. And I went down there just to chill out with some music and uh, take some photographs. And a few days after that, like I said, George went to the groomers and while he was having his hair cut, I went down to Newtown Creek with a large format camera, a large format pinhole camera, and also an Olympus OM20. I guess, like all of us, I like taking photographs. But one thing about the large format and the OM20 down at the creek, I thought to myself, I wonder how these two would stand up in a dark room, side by side, print to print, around about 10 or 12 inch. So that's what I'm gonna do later in the video. First of all, I'll show you guys what I was up to, what I was taking photographs of, and also the scans and photographs that I come back with. So I left the girls and they're gonna go shopping. I don't wanna go shopping around the shops and start looking at silly stuff. So I've decided to come out and take some pictures. This is the reason I come here in the first place. Half my wife's birthday, of course, but um, I bought out the Olympus OM20 with me. I haven't used this for some time, so I'm looking forward to shooting this old classic. I've got a few rolls of Kodak Tri-X and I've also got my lunch as well. So I don't know what to take photographs of, really. I'm just gonna enjoy myself and just take photographs of whatever I fancy, whatever I see. Probably lines and curves and maybe go down some old streets. So stay tuned and uh, I'll show you a little bit of Portsmouth. So it was my wife's birthday and she wanted to get off the island to go to Portsmouth shopping. I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to take a camera and shoot some film because, well, it's shopping, ain't it? I quite enjoyed myself walking around the harbour, taking a few photographs and listening to some music and generally just chilling out. A little bit of me time. We all like that. So this is all very nice, but it's all a little bit poncy for me, really. I want to get around the back streets and see all the nitty gritty, all the dirty streets of uh, Portsmouth and around the dockyards. But I can't go far, because um, my wife wants to have something to eat in a minute, so I've got to stay around here. I'll do the rest of this film around here on some modern stuff. The shopping centre itself, which is called Gunwharf Keys, that place lent itself to some nice lines and chrome until I got kicked out for not <laughs> for having a tripod. Security just come up to me, because I've got a tripod, I'm not allowed to do any filming in it, but if I put the tripod away, I can do filming. Yeah, but yeah, apparently it's private property and I'm not allowed to take any um, video, or I'm not allowed to use a tripod in there. So they said I could go and put my tripod into the, into the reception and go and get it later. I was like, no, it's right, mate. I'll go outside and take photographs. Some of the streets now, no one can stop me. What's the chances of that? This was a nice location to take some photographs until the bus came along, but then the bus soon cleared off and after a while I took advantage of the bridge area for some photographs. Then it was time for a bite to eat in a Mexican house with my family. I thought the hat throw was very good from Jess, but I had to play my part in trying to catch it on my head. If that was a TV remote, you can guarantee it would have missed completely. So I've now come away from the, uh, uh, the posh side of Portsmouth and I thought I'd have a little walk around these back streets while my wife's still shopping. See what I can get. I love walking around the back streets of cities. Usually you can find interesting compositions, grime, dirt and rundown buildings, and generally it's not populated by shoppers. Second roll. And this time we'll put the, uh, the wide lens on the 28mm, do some stuff with that. I like these sort of areas where you've got new buildings and you've got really old buildings as well. You know, these <laughs> century old buildings against those massive posh, big glass, glossy buildings. I thought the idea of composing these old buildings with new buildings was a good idea too. 
I literally spent ages walking around these streets trying to find these old buildings against new buildings and I was really enjoying myself. Then after all that shopping, it was time to get back to the island where a few days later, I found myself out again down at the beach late one afternoon with the Mamiya RZ67 and a roll of Ilford's Delta 100. Again, just listening to music and chilling out, going for a walk, taking photographs. And the last stop of my photo bonanza was a place called Newtown Creek. It's a wonderful place to shoot, even if you do have free cameras to play with. First of all, I've got to apologize for the audio on this video because I forgot my microphone that goes on my t-shirt. So the GoPro mic is gonna to have to do, sorry about that. I've come down to a place called Newtown Creek. A lot of you long-term subscribers have seen this place before. I've been down here many times before taking pictures, but there's one part of this place I've never taken a photograph of, and that's the back of this hut. You can see behind me with the little slope, with the little jetty there. It's actually a boathouse for, I don't know, it's got all boaty stuff in there, lifeboats and, and life boys and oars and stuff like that. But uh, I've bought out me, with me for the job the large format camera and I'm going to be shooting T Mac Kodak T Max 400 film so I've got four sheets of that with me so two of them I'm going to do in the uh, um, intrepid camera I've got there and two of them I'm going to take on the pinhole as well just see what I what I get at the moment we dogs in the groomers so I've decided to come down here for a couple of hours a bit of peace and quiet and do some photography and I've also bought out with hello <laughs> you carry on I am I'm going to do it what have you seen well, uh, well <laughs> have you seen any seals no but i'm just talking live to somebody sorry <laughs> yeah sorry darling i've seen no seal there's a couple of sharks over there i think <laughs> i'm no, joking I'm not. <laughs> and i've also brought out with me the olympus om20 and i've got inside here a roll of kodak t max 400 as well so i'm going to kind of duplicate the same shot um at the back of the shed as i do take on the uh, large format just to see in the dark room if i can make a print say 12 inches and see how the 35mm holds up against the large format, that'll be interesting. So my films are inside here, two sheets are inside this. Notice I've got a little bit of masking tape over the top, just to, just in case these accidentally slide out. They have got some little safety clips on the side, but I don't trust them. So just a little bit of tape over the top while they're in carriage or moving around, they don't fall out. So the films don't slide out. And the last thing to do with this thing is just take a photograph with the Olympus OM20 and in the dark room I can put these two side by side, a small 35mm neg and a 4x5 neg. Obviously the 4x5 neg if we blow that up is going to be a massive difference. I've got much more information on that piece of film than I would have on this small 35mm but it'd be interesting for me to see um, how they compare uh, um, say 10x8 or 12 inch. So I've taken one shot on the 35mm, one shot on the uh, 5x4 Intrepid. I'm now going to take another shot with the pinhole. So I need to whip that GoPro off, put this on that tripod and get the shots of this same angle on pinhole. So that looks like it could be super wide. So this is my second shot, the film's already inside. There's a little tiny boat there. Unfortunately, I can't get any closer with this lens. So it's got to be a wide shot. Um, but I've got it all, all leveled out and sharpened up so and I don't need to uh, measure the bellows that's less than 100 it's about 100 and, just over 105 mm, millimeters so that's going to be fine just take me shot meter up so that's two shots on the 
Intrepid. For one shot I've already done on the pinhole, I'm going to do the second shot on the pinhole, that's my four sheets done. And I've just got it set up with this uh, boathouse there and this little red boat in the foreground because you know this this thing can get really close to stuff so I'm just trying to get a little bit closer to the boat last one was quite wide this one's a little bit closer or well, a lot closer to something in the foreground so it shouldn't uh, have a nice perspective behind it so again probably just about half a second to do job done So that's it, my large format shots are done. All I need to do now is just spend the next hour or so waiting for Jules. This wind is a nightmare, isn't it? I know, guys, sorry about that. Wait for Jules to get his grooming done and go around with the Olympus OM20 and take a few nice 35mm shots, duplicating some of the ones that I did with the large format. And uh, I'll show you guys images in a moment. We'll get in the dark room and we'll see uh, how that 35mm stands up next to the 4x5 on about 10 or 12 inch paper. Had your haircut? Yeah, what is it? What is it? <laughs> what is it? You get a big boy haircut? Yeah, you have. Should we go home? Should we go home and see mummy? Yeah. <laughs> So I picked up George from the groomers. He's, he looks great and he's as happy as a sandboy. Come back and I started to develop my negs. These are the first two photographs that I took. Remember the boathouse, that was the first one I took. It's the other way around at the moment because I've got the negatives flipped. Um, uh, the emulsion, this is the emulsion side up. And this is the first, first one I took, second one I took. The second one, not quite sure what happened with the exposure. You can see it looks, um, <laughs> looks a bit overexposed. I did an average reading. I took one up the sky at the brightest part, one down here at the sea. Um, at the, or the creek at the uh, darkest part and he did an average that's how I come up with that metering but this one here I did a spot meter and uh, come down a couple of stops like I said this one's come out really nice I've got bags of tone going on that's going to make a really nice print I'd say uh, you might think that might be quite dark but um, these is, this is all quite salvageable under the enlarger which I'll go for in a moment but this one um, a bit overexposed but never mind this is still salvageable as well and I'm not quite sure what happened with me framing on on this one here you can see it's a little tiny bit wonky when you look at the rebate especially the top there a little tiny bit wonky I'll put that wonky inside the um, inside the negative carrier and then on to the two pinhole photographs I took this one's come out really nice on pinhole it will be naturally soft because it's you know pinhole photography but this one's come out really nice um, I've got some strange stuff going on on the top of this negative there see that not sure what that is I don't know if it's a light leak or some developing problem I don't know um, never mind I can still make a nice print with that these are nice negs anyway I'm just beating around a bush with them really and this one's come out quite nice look at those clouds look really nice I I'm not sure what's going on here see it there I'm not sure what that is but um, nothing a little crop can't do and these are the 35 mil negs uh, from the Olympus OM20. I developed these in ID11 at stock, so I didn't use a pyro for this one. Um, I used ID11 to develop these and they look really nice. So finally, after a couple of attempts, I've managed to uh, get the print that I like. This is a contrast fire filter for 14 seconds, quite a long time. And I took the contrast filter away, and then all I did then was just uh, freehand, just burn that in with white light as we went along for probably about five or six seconds or so, just to get those clouds popping. And I'm quite happy with it. It's come out, the detail is in the shed, the detail here, I've got, uh, the water isn't muddy, which I didn't want. The water's not muddy and the clouds are all um, tickety-boo. Also these little tiny boats in the background, it's all very sharp. Mm. 
So these are the two prints side by side. This is the 35mm and this one is from the large format camera. This was developed in ID11, this was developed in 510 Pyro. 510 Pyro with that uh, uh, Kodak Trix 400 is finer grain than the ID11 at stock. And that was evident when I started to make this print. This is in large 35mm. Um, in the sky, I tried to start burning the sky in, but it started turning to mush. The sky uh, was just getting a little bit too grainy. So I, I, I tried a couple more, but then I kind of gave up. I just thought I'm not gonna keep wasting paper um, <laughs> to try, but you can see the rest of it. It's held up really well. And if you put them two side by side, put them on a wall uh, and viewed them from a distance, of about three miles, no, not really. If you viewed them from a distance of, uh, I don't know, a meter or a normal viewing distance, you probably wouldn't notice a difference if you put them side by side. But uh, obviously the large format one is cleaner than the 35 mil, but not, by, not, not that you'd notice, it's only pixel peeping, you know? So um, I was quite impressed the way, I've never done that before. So it's quite nice for me to know, you know, when I'm shooting 35 mil, I can blow up to this size and it ain't much different to the four by five, which is massive negs. Obviously, if you're gonna go much bigger uh, print wise, this is the way to go. This will just start breaking up. But again, it depends what you like. Just starting to come through now, look at that. Okay, that's done, into the stop bath, into the fix, into the wash. The only thing is I've got that strange, looks like a light leak or something at the top. Um, maybe it is a light leak, I don't know. But I do like this print, so I might have to just crop that in and get as much of the negative as possible without the leak. The sky looks really nice on this. Oh wow, so that has come out far better than I imagined. Unfortunately, I've just got that dark little area up here. I'm sure that's a light leak of somehow. I must have loaded it in the camera wrong, I don't know. That's okay, I can crop that, but I've got this little bloody hair sitting there. So I need to take the negative out and then crop in. So a little bit more setting up to do. Other than that, it ain't bad. That size negative, look, I've got no dust or no crap on it at all. I'm really happy with that. And I definitely loaded the uh, pinhole negative wrong. You can see the top of the <laughs> top of the photograph there. You've got that funny, strange looking light leak. So I did have to crop in. Unfortunately, that hair that was sitting on the side there, which is evident in this print, you can see it, uh, that was trapped inside the emulsion. So the hair wasn't even there. It got on the emulsion, probably fell off, but that part didn't get developed. So um, it's black, there's nothing I can do about it. I, I can't even um, spot it out because it's black. You know what I want to do is spot that out. It'd be so hard to do. So, um, you know, it's, it's like having a scratch negative. It's just gonna, the light's just gonna go through and make whatever it is black. In this case, that little tiny hair. But uh, just cropping in, I wish I did have this um, composition, but I cropped in and got this composition, which is still nice, still a nice print from the pinhole camera. And one that I did like from the 35mm, um, Kodak Tri-X 400 was that shot there. You might have noticed that on the scans. That one came out really nice. So I made a print of myself uh, of that one there. I might even go back and shoot that on medium format and try and make a bigger print at some point um, if the weather conditions are right. So what I've done guys in this video, I know a lot of you don't have dark rooms, you're not interested in dark room work. So instead of going on for the next 15 minutes about how I made those prints, I'm gonna put those in another video which you'll find a link uh, in the description of this video too, or you just go on my channel and you'll see. It'll be called cool, cool part two. Uh, that's the darkroom process there. So if you're interested in the darkroom stuff, want to know how I made those prints, jump on that video and continue watching this video. If not, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next time.